Hello everyone, it is Gnova the Carnotaurus once again. It is so nice to talk with you all again and I apologize for my absence. I don't make content until I'm motivated enough or bored enough to do so, so here we are now. For once I'm dabbling my feet into something new. A book review, of all things. Keep in mind that I'm not much of a reader. I hated English class growing up. But I would not be making a video on this if I didn't think it was worth checking out. This story is called Prehistorica The Raptor's Tale, written by Jack Blackburn and illustrated by Samir Saeed and Shan Greyer. I apologize if I butchered any of her names. I'm good friends with both Jack and Samir, and have heard of this story well in advance and loved the concept, even before I knew it was going to be an actually published book. So when Jack approached me with a free copy, I could not say no. As one science communicator to another, thank you for your generosity. That is also the type of format I'm going to be covering this in today. It's going to be partly a review, but also an overview of how this story handles and dissects a lot of tropes associated with dinosaurs in a more nuanced and realistic way than was usually seen, which is from what I understand one of the big reasons for the story's existence. But I'm getting ahead of myself. What even is Prehistorica and what is it about? Prehistorica, the raptor's tale, follows a mother, Adasaurus, a larger cousin of Velociraptor, as she cares for her nest of eggs and tries to survive in what is now Mongolia 70 million years ago. That is the story in a nutshell, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's very much in the same style as other prehistoric stories like Raptor Red and Walking with Dinosaurs. In fact, I'd personally compare it to Ballad of Big Al the most. It's a story about learning and exploring the prehistoric world, with one half being the big adventure through the eyes of a certain dinosaur character, and the other half being the science behind said story. It's a story that is very easily digestible and also doesn't take that long to read. I knocked it out in a day. The story also only really takes place within a span of 24 hours, but you'd be surprised just how much goes down in that day. Looking at you, New Dawn. Also, this is not a book with a lot of pictures, so sorry to disappoint you on that for any more visual-focused readers like myself. But both illustrators did an excellent job on the cover and the images that are in the book. I'm about to show you my favorite image, which is spoilery, but honestly, I'm not going to outright avoid spoilers in this video. Just largely talking the broad strokes about most events. I'll be avoiding the ending altogether though, since I feel like you really need to read this blind in order to truly appreciate it. Either way, my favorite piece of art has to be this one by Sumer. Yes, there is a Dinochirus vs. Therizinosaurus fight in this story, and it's just as awesome as it sounds. It was the best scene of the book in my opinion. And I also feel like if there's going to be anything to convince you to go get it, it's going to be this. Also, here's a back cover that shows the whole cast. So yes, you got your Tarbosaurus as well. I apologize if there's anything else of note, but again, I'm not a book person. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments if there's more bookworm relevant things that you want to ask me. As stated before, one of the themes of Prehistorica the Raptor's Tale is that it heavily approaches a lot of things seen in dinosaur media before and manages them with more intricacy. And one of these things is the climate of the Nemeth Formation, where the story takes place. I can understand as a casual dino nerd for why you'd be very confused as to what the habitat things like Therizinosaurus and Tarbosaurus lived in. In Chased by Dinosaurs, you had this mix of desert and rainforest, and in Prehistoric Planet, you seem to have the same general region be described as a desert, swamp, and forest all at once. So, which is it? The story portrays the Nemeth Formation as what it actually was. A temperate floodplain with scatterings of trees and large swamps and water bodies that Dinochirus loved to be by. As with any temperate climate, it had the same seasons that we see today. It wasn't particularly hot, and during the winter it got cold enough to where there would occasionally be snow layering the ground. The reason that you often see the area being described as a desert is because the Goli Desert was around and nearby, particularly to the west, so there were contemporary environments rather than one replacing one another. Next up, the idea of raptors hunting in packs. Social predatory dinosaurs in general is something that is often a controversial topic when talking about these animals. Since it is such a common stereotype, and exactly how true it may or may not be is often pretty messy. The truth is though, there isn't as much evidence of Dromaeosaurs as social animals. Dinonychus was a main example used of these animals being pack hunters, 
but that turned out to more likely be a mob of various unrelated individuals that turned violent. Aedosaurus in the story is a solitary animal, and that is made very clear in a way that's admittedly not very subtle. However, it is important to note that social systems are very variable and you can't really determine such things from relatives. Look at lions versus most other cats, for example. There's some evidence for social dromaeosaurs, but not a lot. Velociraptor has evidence of hearing acuity akin to social bird species, there's a trackway in China of multiple dromaeosaurs moving together, and the currently undescribed Utraptor block may be a social group. We'll have to see. Now on to the last topic that I think the story covers really well, herbivore aggression. This is a very hot topic of discussion in recent years. There has been a long dissatisfaction in paleomedia of herbivores being defenseless fodder that only exists as food for the local carnivorous dinosaurs. This has led to a recent surge of depictions of very active, hostile, and deadly herbivores that will attack on sight and with prejudice. The truth of the matter is that there's a lot more nuance to it than meets the eye. I'm going to quickly shout out UHC's video on the topic and leave it in the description, because I think it's the best video he has ever made, and I'll be heavily referencing it for this topic. The truth is that aggressive herbivores very much do exist, but it, that's not all that they are. It might seem like it came out of nowhere if you're suddenly run up on and mauled by a rhino or hippo, but the truth is that there's always something more underlining that results in such aggressive encounters. You typically see such aggressive behavior in larger herbivores, because they got the size to be able to properly combat predators, and such sizes also means that the typical options prey animals use of running and hiding are not really as effective as they would be otherwise. There could also be behavioral reasons for aggressive herbivores, often involving social behaviors. The underlying cause of hippos being death machines, for example, is them being so territorial of their water sources that they live in. It's just that while this may have originally evolved its aggression towards other hippos over space, they don't exactly discriminate with anything else that enters their water bodies either. This nuance in herbivore behavior is what the story takes as well. I'll just say that with the Dinochirus theory fight, only one guy in the image wanted this. I would like to end this video on the one negative opinion I had in the story, and that's one of the main sources of conflict that happens later on. There's a, se there's a series of circumstances where the Aedosaurus is in very real danger, but she can't exactly run away or keep quiet in her hiding place because she is delivering another egg. It's kind of framed like that one scene in The Quiet Place where the mom's struggling to give birth while the monster's literally right there. I don't know if it's just me, but that really felt out of place and kind of took me out of it. I'm sorry if this seems a bit out of place in the video itself also, but I feel like I had to mention at least one thing that bothered me as a source of critique. It was my only real issue with the book and I adore the rest regardless. I hope you all enjoyed the video. You can find the book on Amazon and the link will be in the description. I would have enjoyed this story in middle or high school, so for any parents out there watching this, it gets my seal of approval. Alright everyone, this video is a bit of a quick one, just me trying to get into the groove of recording videos again, so thank you for your patience. I would like to thank my patrons, Brute Wyvern Dino, Carnotaurus Gun233, and Ceratosuchus Acrogeeka2004 for the generous support. I'm very sorry it's been dry of content lately, but that's the nature of this channel and how I make content. This is meant to be more of a donation system, if anything. Thank you. Regardless, I have a big video planned next, so stay tuned.